Todo para la familia, everything for the family. Kristen here, and we're back for season three of Pop Culture Planet. A lot has changed since we first premiered back in 2020. The podcast has changed formats. I launched an entertainment outlet inspired by the podcast to deliver even more insight into the entertainment world at popcultureplanet.net. I even got married. But what hasn't changed is our dedication to covering pop culture from a diverse and inclusive lens. And today I'm so excited because we're joined by the cast of HBO Max's The Garcia Series, which is coming out April 14th. It's a continuation of the iconic Latino-led Nickelodeon show The Brothers Garcia, which I I was a huge fan of growing up. I actually even rewatched it last year just for fun. And I was like, what? The show's coming back in a new format? How amazing. The Brothers Garcia was groundbreaking as the first English language sitcom to have an all Latino cast and creative team. And they're definitely staying true to that as we go on into this new show. Now the Garcia kids are all grown up with families of their own, but they're spending the summer together at their family beach house in Mexico. We've got a full house here with Bobby Gonzalez and Nitzia Chama, who play George and Anna Kamal. Macho Garcia, Jeffrey Lycon, Elsha Kim, and Trinity Jolie Bliss, who play Carlos, Yun Jin Hun, and Alexa Hun Garcia, and Vanessa Patinsky, who plays Lorena Garcia, joining us today. I hope you guys are ready for this incredible conversation as we dive into the new show, the memories from the past, and what they hope that Latinos take away from this positive, uplifting series. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this show. It's like my most anticipated show ever. I grew up watching the Brothers Garcia. I was re-watching it last year just for fun. And I was like, wait a minute, are you kidding me? It's coming back. Um, so just to start with you, Bobby, what is it like to come back to a project like this? When we did the original series, every we really did just feel like family. Um, I call Carlos the camera fake dad or dad, depending <laughs> on the circumstance. Um, I still call Vanessa, you know, sis, and she calls me, you know, brother bear and stuff. And so we had that sense of family. And so coming back, it just felt like we had a long vacation and then the family's back together and then the family got bigger and i was a little worried um you know because since we had such a tight-knit group before bringing in so many other people like what's it going to be like but as soon as everyone showed up everyone had the same sort of mindset we had the same sort of even the children had the same sort of goal in mind for what this show should be and so instantly our family just grew and it really was still just like family again in this tight, close-knit group. I still can't believe that it's actually happening. I mean, it was amazing. Like, it was just so fun to be reunited with, you know, all my brothers and my TV mom and dad. And then now this new, wonderful, talented, amazing new generation of, of kiddos and wives and husbands. It was surreal. Um, you know, we filmed the original show about 20 years ago. And, and honestly, once we were you know, there had been talks about it, but, you know, no one was holding their breath. And once we finally got like the, the actual green light, um, it, it was just, it, it's a dream come true. Being, being back on set, like with the family, with these people that, that I loved, um, you know, so many years ago. And, and we just picked up where we left off, really. Uh, it, it was a pretty great experience. I'd love to go to each of you and just kind of hear where each of your characters is in this series. Yunjin. So, I mean, as you know, she's Carlos's wife. Um, and and her character, really, she cares about her kids and them following their dreams. And um, she's kind of like an earth muffin, very spiritual, but also learning, like coming to terms with a lot of things from her family also in this series. And what about you, Jeffrey? Carlos's character, uh, once again, is, is, you know, trying to juggle a lot of different uh, roles in his life. One of them, one of the most important ones being, you know, a father to these, to these two girls and, um, and a husband. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's still trying to figure it out. He, he's, he's gone through a lot, um, but I think he's well-grounded and he's finally, you know, a little bit more mature and uh and yeah he's just it he always comes back to being the person you know that's creative with certain ideas and and wanting to 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 just make everything bigger than life but at the same time protect all of his girls and uh and still you know have his family's back can you tell us a little bit about where lorena is now she is a loving wife, a very protective mother, and I want to say a cool aunt, um, you know, and she still loves her brothers. Um, 
you know, she is still just Lorena at the core. The dramatics are dialed up even more than they were when she was growing up. That never left her. And, you know, I think she's just really trying to figure out this happy balance of work and life and being a mom and being a wife. And, you know, that's so relatable to so many women on every level. Um, so it's just been really fun to watch her, you know, transform into an adult, but like still at the core be just so extra. <laughs> what about you, Trinity? I play Alexa Garcia, who is the daughter of Carlos and Yunjin Ha Garcia. <laughs> um, Alexa loves art. She's an artist and she expresses herself through her art and she absolutely loves her family. Um, and she's definitely an observer and she likes to observe everything. And she's kind of somewhat of an introvert or, um, uh, and it was really fun to play her. I think in this, she kind of finds her standing point, especially in one of the episodes, she gets negative feedback on her art and she kind of finds where she stands on her dreams and everything like that. Also, she gets the experience to live under one roof with her family, all of her family for two months, which definitely has <laughs> conflicts and laughter and love. You also, you know, narrate this and kind of and sing throughout this series as well. What was that like? I really enjoyed being the narrator and I think it kind of fits Alexa's character. Um, it's kind of sometimes when she narrates, you feel like she's talking to you while she paints the picture and everything. And also very lucky to have, like you said, a, one of my songs in the series. Um, it's called Paradise. And song Paradise is more about being with the person you love than any particular place, which I think really fits with what drives the Garcias. So I'm really happy it gets to be in the show. That's really nice that you were a fan before because I was saying... Uh previously that I went to the doctor the other day and the uh, lady said like I saw your social media and you are in the Garcias and I grew up with the show and since I didn't uh, I grew up in Mexico so we didn't have that show that uh, this content so being part of this show and being uh, one of the new additions brings me so much joy because uh, we have the opportunity to share our culture, uh, in my case, my country, because we shot in Mexico. So finally, I'm embracing the fact that I'm Mexican, Mexican-American, that I do have an accent, and that's a superpower because we uh, speak two languages or more, and we have the honor to share uh, everything that makes us unique. Because when I came here, I was so worried, like, oh, my God, in the American accent. And then I have to learn this and I have to go to school and be maybe like different. And now it's like, no, this is Nitzia. And I am Mexicana and I am a Latina. And I, now I'm representing the best of our uh, communities. And I'm sure they're going to be really proud and they're going to identify and they're going to say like, wow, she looks like my sister, like my daughter. She has the same uh, skin tone. She has the same accent and that makes makes us uh, unique. And this is a very important uh, time for their representation in the industry. That's one of the things that I really loved about um, this season, um, as well as that final episode, you know, especially you kind of really get to see George going on that journey of like, am I Mexican enough? Am I American enough? Um, and that episode where you guys kind of break down those stereotypes of, of being Latino in Hollywood. Can you can you guys talk a little bit about that? That hit really close to home for me, it, both as just a normal Cuban-American man, but also as an actor, I've had auditions where I've gone out and it's been a, a very multicultural audition where there's all sorts of, of people there to audition and I can hear you know a little bit of the audition going on and then I walk into the room and I do it once and I think I did a great job and then they go okay but can you do it again however your people sound like and then my heart just drops and this is not a show where I had to do that this 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 and it speaks to it too, is I, I constantly have had to struggle my entire life. Well, am I Cuban? Am I Cuban American? Or am I American? I don't know, because depending on who I ask, depending on where I am in the country, where I am in the world, that answer might change for people. And uh, identity is something that's really important for us. I feel like uh, as, a, as a child of, of immigrants, identity is something that we struggle with. And something that we really wanted to push forward in the show is, you're all of it. You're everything. You're everything under the sun. You get to claim all of that, and that's who you are, and you are whatever you want to be. I remember walking into the audition originally and, you know, asking, you know, would you like an accent <laughs> with with my reading? 
And Jeff asked, do you have an accent? And I said, no, but you know, he, he's a, he's a Hispanic character. So, and he's like, well then no, I don't want an accent then if you don't have one. And I was like, okay. And like, from that point on, I just knew like this was going to be different. At the core of everything regarding Latino stereotypes, you know, this show very much is a family show and it is about a family that is hardworking and loving. And, you know, yes, we fight, we bicker, we make fun of each other, but at the core, you know, family is really, really important. And, you know, we are, it's just, it's a loving show with a very positive Hispanic portrayal. You know, nobody is being deported. There's not anything that is, you know, triggering for people. It's, it's just about a family that loves each other. It works really hard and wants to be successful. And, you know, I think that that is something that we all need in especially the Latino community right now. So I'm excited for everybody to tune in. I noticed already some fun Easter eggs to the original show in this series. Is there anything that you're really excited to recreate? There's a lot um, from the original series. Uh, the salsa, the atomic salsa being one. Um, there's a couple characters from the original show that are making some appearances, which is, you know, super exciting to, to be able to see them again. There is an episode where it's very focused on me Carlos's character and George's character and there's a scene where it's just the three of us and it's kind of like the first time that you get to see the the three of us really interact as we used to as kids and um you know that day was just really emotional for me and the brothers because we just you know this was after being in Mexico for eight weeks but we just like left set that day and we were like whoa like we did that um so I'm really excited um, for everybody to, you know, get to know the new cast members, but that that episode's going to be really special because you're seeing like the original siblings interact. I think in terms of cast members, at least two people that I interact with most on the show is obviously my my arch nemesis, which is Goner from the news station. He played a character named Butter on the original series. And then my beloved Amor, Paul Rodriguez Jr., was also my crush in high school. So they did a lot of like fun casting Easter eggs, which I think are really special and, and, and fun for people who watch the original series. Thank you so much for joining us on the season three premiere of Pop Culture Planet. And special thank you to our guests, the cast of HBO Max's The Garcias. If you're interested in keeping up with Pop Culture Planet, you can check out popcultureplanet.net or Pop Cult Planet on Twitter and Instagram. We also have shirts, stickers, and sweatshirts available at teespring.com slash stores slash kmaldo. You can catch new episodes of Pop Culture Planet every week at youtube.com slash kmaldo to join in on the conversation or listen after the fact on any of your favorite podcast listening platforms. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing so you know when a new one is posted. Rate and review this podcast and share it with your fellow pop culture lovers. Thanks for listening. It's been a blast and I'll talk to you next week. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out the exclusive Discord available on my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!